What's up guys, Chicks there from Chicks Tech Reviews. Today, I've got my hands on the Pal Kitty X15. Now this is a new handheld Android gaming console. You'll be able to play a wide range of games from Android to emulator classics like N64, PSP and lots more. Now as it says on the box, games make happiness easier I think there might be some truth to that. I'm certainly feeling quite happy when I'm playing games. So I had to pick this one up because it's something different for you guys to check out. Um, the price is actually not bad for what you're getting. And check this out, people. I actually just charged this up fully. Handheld Android gaming console, ergonomic design. Uh, fits in the hands perfectly. And a quick look inside the box, you will find a user manual and a USB power cable or you can use a standard micro USB to charge it works both ways now first and foremost let's check out the specs so you have a 5.5 inch IPS touchscreen display with a 1280 by 720 resolution screen now this is powered by the MediaTek 8163 quad core CPU with the Mali T720 you've got 2 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of internal storage now you do have a built-in custom version of Android 7 You've got native game mapping, so you can simply press one button and you can map the controls of any game you like. Now you can download thousands of games. It's got a 3000 mAh battery built in, so you can play games anywhere you like. Now you also have an HDMI out, so you can connect this up to your TV and enjoy some big screen gaming action. Now the device itself is 20 centimeters in width, it's 10 centimeters in height, and it's 2.5 centimeters at its thickest points. And you can see you've got these grips on the back. Otherwise the device is quite slim and light, weighing in at 450 grams. Now you do have a single joystick on the left, followed by D-pad, volume controls just under that. And on this side we have A, X, Y, B. You've got start, select, you've got a G button. Now what that G button does, you can press that at any time and straight away you'll be able to map your touchscreen controls to your buttons and it's a native function and it works extremely well. Now just below that you have a power button and on top you've got your trigger buttons L1, L2, R1, R2 and for ports you have full size USB, mini HDMI out, headphone jack, micro SD card slot and I've actually inserted a micro SD card and that's actually a 32 gig card and I actually put that card in so I can load up my own APKs and over here you have your DC power socket and, ne and right next to it, this device can also be charged from the micro USB port. And you've got another full size USB port. So plenty of ports there to keep you busy. When you insert a micro SD card, it will ask you, do you want to make that your default uh, internal storage? Now let's go through the system menus. When you first switch on the device, you won't see any apps. There won't be much to do apart from these two apps. All the other sections are pretty much empty. Now, these two are actually gaming platforms, so you can open them and download games of various different formats. When you download games, they will immediately appear in your My Apps section. So you can see I've downloaded a few games. I've got GTA there. I've got Minecraft, Plants vs. Zombies, Street Fighter. But I also installed my own APKs through MicroSD. So I installed Aptoid TV and Aptoid, and then that gave me access to YouTube, Firefox, Netflix, PlayStation 4 Remote Play and so on and so forth. So you can install any app or any APK you like from microSD and you can install as many third party app stores as you like. Now the Google Play Store is not included because this is obviously a Chinese product. It's not sold globally yet. So you're going to be buying this from a website that will actually ship worldwide. So this is what you will ultimately get. But you can do a lot to this to make it work for you. Now, at least the system menus are all in English. So settings, you've actually got dual band Wi-Fi and the touchscreen itself is actually very responsive. You can choose to navigate with the touchscreen or you can use the joystick or the D-pad to navigate. The choice is completely yours. You've got different modes here, handle mode. So depending on what game you're playing, you can emulate a PS3 controller or an Xbox controller. Of course, we've only got one joystick. There's no dual joystick action here, but it still works really well, especially for emulation titles. Um, over here, you've got your display settings and your HDMI configuration, along with your brightness and sleep settings. If we go back, you've got wallpaper, parental lock, date and time and advanced. I'll quickly show you advanced option. That's basically your 
Bluetooth sound and your full Android settings. So first of all, let's see what multimedia looks like. I'm going to play a YouTube video. We're going to hear the sound as well. So let's begin with a YouTube trailer. And you can stream a maximum of 1080p on YouTube. So that was YouTube. Now let's quickly check out Netflix. So as expected, Netflix is supported at a maximum resolution of 480p. And I have to say, it's not bad on this 5.5 inch screen. Uh, so now it's time to check out the games, but before we play any, I'm going to show you how I got the games. So the first section over here, which says games, over here you'll find your gaming platforms. So you've got Happy Chick there, and you've got another one, which I'm not sure what the name is. You can go to local games. So these, these are the games that I actually built in already. So you've got Riptide, Beyond Youth, and I'm not sure what that one's about. And then you've got more gaming platforms here. So first of all, let's go to Happy Chick. I think most of you guys will know what Happy Chick is already, but there's no harm showing you again. There is an update, which I'm not gonna bother doing right now, because I just wanna quickly show you how to get games. From here, you can go ahead and search any game you like. Um, you've got various different platforms. You can see N64, GBA, Arcade, PSP, PlayStation, Dreamcast. There are a lot of games to choose from. It's a complete library. Now, if you click on play, you can see that I've already installed a lot of games. All right, so I'm gonna go and play one right now just to show you what to expect. So first of all, let's play an NDS title. Let's play Super Mario from NDS. But if something doesn't work, so for example, I'm pressing down and it's actually selecting the left, as you can see. So press G and immediately you'll be able to reconfigure things. So I put the Y, B, A and X right over that. Now over here, I will play with the joystick. So if I put it towards the center and I'll make it bigger. So now the joystick will work absolutely fine. If I wanted to use D-pad, I can move these controls right over the on screen. I'll put select and start in the right places. And I guess we're not using trigger buttons. So if we hit save, save and hide. So that's saved just for this game. So let's start a game, show you what it looks like. You can actually configure things from here as well. So you can have it with on-screen display, or you can actually have it so it just shows the single big screen for you to play with. And you can also fine tune that further by going to settings, playing around with sounds. So there's a lot you can edit and change. So here we go. Exactly how I remember it. I'm actually gonna to switch to D-pad, because I think D-pad will work better for Mario style games. Look how easy that is. Save, and now we have D-pad, yep. D-pad works a lot better. Let's become Big Mario, and just run through the level. Now let's change the game, let's play something else. You can close a game by just pressing back. Quit. That was the easiest way, just quit the game out and you'll come back to the menu. Now let's play an arcade title. So Marvel vs. Capcom, Clash of the Superheroes. Let's see how this plays. Bring the joystick here. Make the joystick bigger. Okay, that's the max. So joystick is better for arcade titles. Let's do the buttons. So we've got six buttons here, so we're gonna have to do something different. So A, B, Y, C, we'll put R1 on this side and I'll put L1 for the six button. So we've got our six buttons all assigned. Now all you do is press, now all you do is press save and hide. So joystick, here we go. It's on turbo, so it's a bit faster than what you might be used to. Here we go. Yes. 
So this is what you can expect in terms of N64 emulation. If you see something in this console that's Chinese and you have no idea what it says, but you need to know, you just grab your smartphone and open up Google Translate. Both You can get it on both Android and iOS. Click on camera and set it to detecting an English. So it will automatically detect what language is in front. So you can see the translation says thumb play. Thumb play. Let's open it up. And from here you will see a lot of games, but you won't know exactly what to do and how to download it. So another brief translation, you will see that the bottom it's home, classification, dynamic and list. So if we just click on list, you will see a whole list of games. So it's kind of their charts, top tens and stuff like that. And again, everything will be translated via your phone. So you do have quite a large mega list of games. You, you can see um, most popular games will be available here. You can just click on download and then you don't need your translator because the downloading part you can see is in English, 0%, 1%. And when that gets to 100, you will have that game installed on your system. So that's how easy it is to get the games. Go to my apps and we are first of all going to test out GTA Vice City. So that was emulation games and Android. But what about the latest games? Well, I've got Project X game streaming by Xbox installed on this, which means I can basically game stream any of these games and play them. I know there's only one joystick. So the solution is to connect your own Bluetooth controller. The Game Surge G4S works absolutely fine. And then you'll be able to play Project X Xbox game streaming games directly on this device. So we are playing Forza 7 with this budget Android gaming tablet. I'm using an external controller and you can see that is actually working quite well. So the game is streaming. So I am game streaming with Project X. It's okay, it's playable. I wanna see if the internal controllers work. The built-in controllers do not work. They don't get detected during game streaming. So there you have it guys, that was the Pow Kiddy X15. A very interesting product priced at only £86 or around US$100. dollars. Now let's be real, for the price you're getting quite a bit of functionality here. You're certainly not getting flagship specs, but at this price point you really can't complain. Now this little handheld console has plenty of performance power to handle games like GTA Android and emulation games like PSP, N64, Arcade and lots more. 
Now I do like the mapping function, it's very good and user friendly. You can also play the latest games via services like Project X Game Streaming, however the built in controller would not work with Project X so you do have to use a Bluetooth controller and the GameSir G4S worked perfectly. Now speaker quality was surprisingly loud and for streaming online videos with YouTube, Netflix or even APKs like Cinema HD was actually quite an enjoyable experience. So is this product worth the £86? I would like to say yes. It's not for everyone but I personally have spent already many hours gaming on this device and also considering we are in lockdown it seems like a ideal time killer. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and with that being said, I will leave the links in the description box below so you guys can check this product out. Meanwhile, thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a brilliant day. I'll see you guys in the next one.